dear students today we are going to discuss about the hip joint so how to explain a joint first we have to write about the type then articular surfaces then ligaments third heading what should be the third heading that is one ligaments then next one movements and muscles producing movements then associated arterial supply nerve supply in particular and then applied artery so these are the major headings of one joint so we see what type joint is it is what ball and socket variety of synovial joint you already know what is meant by ball and socket variety of synovial joint even though we see what is meant by ball and socket variety here one articular surface is rounded or it will be a ball like structure and the other articular surface will be a depression or a cup shaped depression okay so that's why it's known as ball and socket so type is clear ball and socket variety of synovial joint it's a movable joint so synovial joint so type is clear no articular surfaces what are the articular surfaces here it is clear this is what the hip bone and the hip bone the depression which is in the hip bone is not the acetabulum and this is what the head of the femur so these are the two bones articulates there head of the femur articulate with the acetabulum of the hip bone so head of the femur and the acetabulum of the hip bone those are the articular surfaces now what are the ligaments or supporting factors first one is fibrous capsule then ilio femoral ligament fibo femoral ligament ischio femoral ligament see these are the three parts of this hip bone these are the three parts means the ilium pubis and ischium those are the three parts of the hip bone from these parts to the femur that's why these ligaments are as say from the, the first ligament ilio femoral means from the ilium to the femur Pubic femoral means pubis to the femur. Ischial femoral means from the ischium to the femur. That's all. So it will, it will be easy to study. Okay. So fibrous capsule, then ilio femoral ligament, pubic femoral ligament, ischial femoral ligament. Then another one, ligament of head of femur. That ligament is arising from the head of the femur. Okay. So ligament of head of femur. Then acetabular labrum, transverse acetabular ligament. See, transverse. Ah, uh, yes. as a tabular ligament we'll see the features later so these are the major supporting factors now we'll see the details see first one is fibrous capsule see fibrous capsule everywhere this capsule means which encircles the joint or which cover the joint okay see like this the whole joint is covered with a fibrous sheet that is what the capsule okay so it, it will be having one medial end and one lateral end Okay, so medial attachment or att attachment on the hip bone and the attachment on the femur. Okay, we will say that. So it is attached on the hip bone to the acetabular labrum, including the transverse acetabular ligament. Okay, so hip bone where it is attached, it is attached to the acetabular labrum. What is that acetabular labrum actually? Stand. this fibro cartilage this cartilage in a structure which is connected to this acetabulum this nose acetabular labrum in order to deepen the fossa see this structure this is what the labrum acetabulum around the acetabulum so it is known as what acetabular labrum okay and here lower part at all view this lower part of this acetabulum it is there we are having a notch that notch is bridged by a ligament this is what the transverse acetabular ligament okay so acetabular labrum plus transverse acetabular ligament so here the capsule is attached to these structures into the acetabular labrum and the transverse acetabular ligament then the femur so it is clear acetabular labrum and transverse acetabular ligament so on the hip bone it is attached to these structures then on the femur i told you it is having one medial attachment on the hip bone and lateral attachment see medial attachment on the hip bone and the lateral attachment on the femur so attachment on the hip bone the two what all structures acetabular labrum and the transverse acetabular ligament now attachment on the femur so it is attached to the inner trochanteric line in front and 1 cm medial to the inner trochanteric crest behind that is meant that anterior it is attached to the trochanteric line i already told you 
see uh, this is what the capsule here see this is anti review and this is a posterior review and it will be between the trochanter this is a greater trochanter and here comes the lesser trochanter there we are having the intertrochanter line respond to that intertrochanter line here in the posterior aspect intertrochanter thrust see this is a posterior view so this capsule lateral end of the capsule here and it will be tested as an intertrochanter line but posteriorly not to the intertrochanter thrust see one centimeter medial see almost this gap it is around one centimeter so one centimeter medial that means it is attaching to the neck okay so one centimeter medial to the intertrochanter thrust to the neck okay clear so anterior attachment to the intertrochanter line posterior attachment to the neck you can conclude it in that way okay so on the femur it is attached to the intertrochanter line and one centimeter medial to the intertrochanter thrust in bracket you are to add to the neck okay so attachments of the fibrous capsules okay fibrous capsule means it's a fibrous sheet covering this joint so it will be having one medial attachment and the lateral attachment medial attachment is on the hip bone and the lateral attachment is on the femur now the attachments are clear now iliofemoral ligament iliofemoral ligament is a triangular or y shaped ligament so it will be having one apex and one base the apex which is attached to anterior inferior iliac spine base is, uh, base is attached to intertrochanteric line see actually it's a part of that capsule this iliofemoral ligament it's a part of that capsule see this triangular shaped ligament this is what the iliofemoral ligament actually then why here it is y shaped it's upper part and the lower part or this lower part are thickened to form a band like structure so in between this middle part is also this green colored part is also a part of this iliofemoral ligament okay so actually it is triangular shaped but these two bands are very thick so as a result it looks like a y okay so anyway this is what the base and here comes the apex apex is attached to this anterior inferior iliac spine what is that anterior i already told you here in the ilium is having two spines in the anterior part anterior superior then anterior inferior so imagine this is anterior inferior iliac spine so this y shape oh sorry this uh, triangular shape or y shaped ligament its apex is connected to this anterior inferior iliac spine base which is connected to intertrochanter line correct now this is a greater trochanter this one is a lesser trochanter so here comes the intertrochanter line so that attach attachment is clear apex is connected to anterior and inferior iliac spine base is connected to intertrochanter line now pubofemoral ligament pubofemoral ligament is attached to iliopubic eminence obturator crust and obturator membrane see this bulging this is what the iliopubic eminence okay this is the meeting point of ilium with the pubic bone okay that's why this junction is known as iliopubic eminence so from here we can see some fibers so these are the fibers of pubofemoral ligament so it is arising from this iliac junction of this ilium with the pubis so iliopubic eminence okay not only that this obturator crust and some fibers are arising from obturator membrane so for anyway from here it runs laterally so origin is clear iliopubic eminence obturator crust and obturator membrane see these fibers see here it is very clear it is continuous with this capsule or this iliofemoral ligament so it is merged with the, this capsule or this iliofemoral ligament it is continuous with the capsule and the lower band of iliofemoral ligament what is that lower band i already told you here it is having upper band and lower band okay so this is what the fibrofemoral ligament this fibers continues with our, this lower band and capsule now ischiofemoral ligament ischiofemoral ligament one end is attached to the ischium up to the acetabulum the other end which is continuous with the this capsule and that's to the greater trochanter we'll see that see this one is a ischial tuberosity okay so the 
this attachment is extending from this ischium to the acetabulum. Okay, so, so medial end, medial end of this ligament is attached to these structures, ischium and the extends that are, attachment of that end is ex, ex, uh, extended. Extended up to this acetabula. Anyway, from the arise from that point, ischium and this is the part of the acetabula. From there, this fibers continue, most of the fibers continues with the capsule, and some fibers are attached to this greater prochander. Okay, so fibers arising from ischium and extends up to the acetabulum. From, from there, these fibers, most of the fibers continues with the, the capsule. And some fibers will attach to this greater trochanter. Okay, so these are the three ligaments arising from this three parts of the hip bone. Okay, ilium to the fem uh, femur, ilio femoral ligament, pubis to the femur, pivo femoral ligament, ischium to the femur, ischio femoral ligament. Okay, now as a tabular labrum, this factor also or this labrum. That also supports the joint. See, it's a fibrocartilaginous structure already told you. It is connected to the margin of the acetabulum in order to deepen the fossa. Then next one, transverse acetabular ligament. Transverse acetabular ligament which bridges the acetabular or uh, it bridges the acetabular notch. Okay. Then ligament of head of femur. So that's also a triangular shaped ligament. Apex is connected to the fovea. Fovea cavity is the here. head of the femur is having a depression that is called the fovea. So apex is connected to the fovea, and the base of this ligament is connected to this transverse of the tabular ligament. See, this is what the two curtains of this ligament. Okay, so actually it's a continuous ligament like this. So here comes the base, which is attached to this transverse of the tabular ligament. So those are the supporting factors. So 10, around the 10 supporting factors. Now, what are the muscles producing movements? So what are the movements here? Flexion, extension, adduction, abduction, medial rotation, lateral rotation. So flexion is by psoas major and iliacus. Extension of gluteus maximus and the hamstring muscles. Then adduction, adductor longus, brevis, and magnus. Three muscles are there. Adductor longus, adductor brevis, and adductor magnus. Abduction by gluteus medius and minimus. Okay, see here abduction, gluteus medius and minimus, extension, gluteus maximus. Keep it in mind extension, gluteus maximus, abduction, gluteus medius and minimus. The medial rotation and surface are at and anterior fibers of gluteus medius and minimus. Then lateral rotation to obturator muscles, obturator internus and obturator externus. Two gemellae muscles means gemellae superior and gemellae inferior. Then quadratus femoris, the muscle with the quadrangular shape of muscle. Okay, so that one is a quadratus femoris. Now, blood supply it is supplied by obturator artery, then two circumflex femoral arteries, then gluteal arteries. Then nerve supply it is supplied by femoral nerve. What will the femoral nerve and the division of obturator nerve, then accessory obturator nerve, nerve to quadratus. Femoris and the superior gluteal nerve, those are the major nerves. Then, clinical anatomy dislocation is most, more common in this hip joint. So, these are the, some of the important features of this hip, uh, hip joint. The remaining details that you have to read from your textbook. Okay.